Thank you very much, very, very much. It's great to see so many old friends after so long. I can't believe it's been over a year. I was talking to some people at the booth today, and it, it really has been quite a long time. Uh, unfortunately for those old friends, I'm going to be giving a presentation that is largely the same as I've been giving for seven years. So um, it seems old to me. It might be very new to some of the others. You're going to pick up a lot from Kevin's presentation with maybe a bit more of an industry structure on it. And it is a great name from the CODASIP team on scaling is failing. That wasn't mine. That was really marketing people. So um, as an engineer, I like to start with the problem. And the problem is, for my entire life, the economics of the semiconductor industry, as you well know, has been really governed, the governing dynamics of semiconductor laws. Uh, obviously, Moore's law, Denard's scaling, Amdahl's law. And unfortunately, after my entire life, they are now failing, or have been failing for a while. If you look at the um, graphic on the right, which is a famous one from John and David, uh, really about performance over time. And I, like Kevin, would lived through my first processor job in the risk-sysc wars with all of that that it entails. Um, the, the whole point here is that their performance in a classic economic sense is a diminishing marginal return, meaning that the second derivative went from positive to negative, and then the first derivative over time right, approaches uh, monotomically zero. So you're not getting the performance that you were to based on doing the same things over and over again. So you're hoping for a different result. And that's why we've been talking all of this time about doing things differently to adjust to this new end. Now, that's bad. But in my mind, is, yes, I have a technical degree, but I'm really an economist at heart. Um, the real problem with this is the costs are becoming prohibitively high. You know, it was 10 to $50 million when I started processors and maybe a billion dollar fab. And it was all rather normal and it was reasonable and you could just remap it into the next node and everything kind of worked, like the story that Kevin gave. It, it all kind of hung together. Now we're talking about half billion dollar ASICs, 20 billion or more dollar fabs billions of dollars in process technology, all to get this diminishing marginal returns, which is clearly what nobody would want to do. So that's the problem in, in the engineering context. Now, the, the good thing about our industry is it's in, full of incredibly brilliant people, and they are always looking at innovating and coming up with different ideas. And these are the three that I've been thinking about and focusing on for about the last 10 years. Um, the first one is, is kind of obvious if you're uh, on the physics side of things is let's get rid of these pesky electrons and let's just go to photons. Just, just get rid of them and move on to a different carrier, which is great, but there is a lot of complexity in doing that, a lot of packaging. Um, and I, but, but I know quite a few really interesting companies, mostly startups that are doing optical computing, and I believe it is going to be mainstream. So I think it's a really fantastic outcome. Now, the problem is I don't think it's going to be short term. So then, well, what's the other thing you can do? So my background is material science, solid state chemistry and physics, and I would naturally go, well, let's just change the material set. Let's just, just, just flip to a new material and, you know, that's a bit complicated too. Silicon is not the best uh, semiconductor with an indirect band cap and it's pretty large. And so there are other things, but processing is harder. Now, there are some things that I really like. The one most is now carbon nanotubes. Uh, unfortunately, I've been hearing carbon nanotubes being the change our life or graphene and carbon in general for about 30 years and it has not quite changed our life yet. But I actually do believe that it's going to be a mainstream thing. There's a lot of interesting work in uh, resistive RAM. There's interesting work in the FETs and really integrating it into CMOS. There's a great paper I saw from TSMC and two nanometers. So I think that will also be mainstream. But again, 
not short term. So then what, what else do you do? Well, it's exactly what Kevin was saying. Let's rethink the design process and let's bring together software and hardware developers and let's actually try to customize the code to the workload. It's what I've been calling heterogeneous compute. Other people call domain-specific acceleration. And obviously that's what I think is the only thing short term that one can go on. So that's the option. That's what Codasip is all about, by the way. And whilst I'm technically new to Codasip, I actually was one of their first customers in 2014 when I needed to change uh, something on a processor to do a security application. And for a lot of reason, ARM wouldn't work. And for even more reason, MIPS wouldn't work. And out popped this RISC-V. And the founder of Codasip, Carol, ended up in Silicon Valley in my office selling me on this EDA tool and how great it's going to change. And I said, well, Carol, I think you're right. And the RISC-V is probably the only answer. So if the technical guys buy it, I, I'm, I can say no, but I can't say yes. So this is probably going to be a good way. But I don't know about this EDA, the way you're doing things. Is it really going to be faster, cheaper, better? And I said, I don't know. And oh, by the way, I think you're right, right? And I've been saying this, but, but I think you're a little bit too soon. This is 2014. I said, 2020, about five or six years, that's when you're going to see this whole thing come together. Now, I didn't realize as much about Risk Five, the traction, the issues with the arm uh, situation. So really, this has been an absolutely fantastic thing. And part of why we're all here is risk five is when you think about open ISA customization at a time when the industry needs a problem to be solved through customization, it's, it's like right, an actual nirvana, a perfect event all coming together. And, and I think it's now. Right? It was in 2014, but I do think it's absolutely now. So the other good thing I told Carol is, the bad thing is you're too early. The good thing is, by the time that it's right, you're going to be right on time, and everybody's going to be launching new products and trying to get into the Risk Five, and they're going to be too late. So you're, you're, it's actually better to be late than or early than late. So you know, as a student of business, I like to step back and think about these problems and. One of the things I go back to all the time is Charles Darwin. I, I just think th the thought process that he had was absolutely incredible. And this is something that he came from, uh, that came from the origin of species that I think is apropos for our time, which is it's not the most intellectual of species, the brightest that survives. It's not the strongest, right? But the species that survives is one that adapts and adjusts to the best changing environment in which it finds itself. And that, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a different time in the semiconductor industry for my entire life. It's never this way. It's been always the same thing over and over again. And now we're facing, I would say, it's almost a level of crisis in the industry. And something has to change. And if you do not adapt, right, you will die. And I think you're going to see the possible shakeout in the industry as those that do do it move and those that don't do not, which is the, the key message of the presentation. Now, unfortunately, because I am now the CEO of Codasip, I have to do one advertisement for the company as part of this, as opposed to talking about just the, uh, the, uh, the industry trends. But I, I think we're aligned perfectly with the industry trend. The whole concept of Codasip was to bring together really architects and software developers in an EDA context to create the ability to make processors that are easy to, easier to do and faster. And, and, and actually, and I talked to Carol, he's actually proven it with the team, right? Where it's a fraction of the time to design and develop and the cost through the A part of EDA, the automation of it. So it really works. And obviously, this is not a ISA specific thing, but it works on anything. But obviously, the right trend now is risk five. So what Codasip does is really built around Studio, the EDA design tool. Right? They have a portfolio of processors, of which we're really proactively hiring now, mostly in Europe, to actually scale up and make that a much bigger portfolio. We have a set of uh, domain-specific accelerators. And so you can do one of two things. You can do your own grounds-up processor, which some of our customers do, or you can take one of ours and customize it. 
And, I, you know, I, I didn't realize this until I was talking to them and we're kind of the best kept secret, I guess, in the little European company. But there's over 2 billion um, processors made by Studio and our customers that have already shipped. So over 2 billion over the last several years. Some of them on our grounds up from the customer. Some of them are actually things that started with ours and customized. So my, my last slide, and uh, thanks again for listening to me, is you know, the message is things are different now in the industry. I think Risk V, this great community, is absolutely perfectly positioned. And I think it's an adapt or die time for everybody. Thanks. Appreciate it.